actually very uncommon uh, soft air and cyber gun magazines. I got one from Crossman here, and all the others are from uh, soft air and cyber gun. We'll start with the Crossman one. This one's for the Stinger P9. These are all um, with all the packaging, by the way. Um, Stinger P9. This is the Double Eagle P9 that was uh, adapted from the oh God, who made it? The HFC one. The Stinger P9 was a uh, cheaper version. Um, maybe I'll do a video review on that sometime, but. Um, there's a catalog on the back of all the different BBs you can get made in China and this is model SM1P9 and it shows the clear version of the P9 on the back. By taking all the staples out actually I think this is a good deal because I only paid nine dollars for it and these are usually pretty expensive and then how these differ from the HFC P99 magazines is that they um, jam and then they have a, a high capacity trap door on the back which works like a regular high cap shake and then good to go um, all plastic construction unfortunately but again you know it was just a cost-saving method and that finishes up with the stinger p9 magazine All right, now we're going to get into the cyber gun stuff. Here is the, what is this, uh, Smith & Wesson uh, shotgun magazine. Let's turn it on. This is magazine 19 BBs. Um, these are for Smith & Wesson and Mossberg shotguns that follow the uh, Double Eagle M47 system. So like the ones in the back here. Just, just like the Crossman Stinger shotguns and stuff like that. The older system, not the newer one made by Academy. And uh, it's actually got a full list of a bunch of different models that use uh, Double Eagle's design. And those are some really good uh, single shot shotguns. Um, I think you can still find these today, like new in box on like Goodwill. But the magazines are really hard to come by. And this one came from uh, Spain. And then we have our two... These are the old style ones. They have uh, the screws in the side and then they have the textured uh, release panels. And uh, they both appear to be working. So, I mean, new in box, I hope they would. All plastic construction. Again, it's another Double Eagle product. Everything was getting cheaper over time. Not that, not that they were bad. Double Eagle M47 uh, shotguns were like a staple, a dependable staple of uh, spring airsoft wars. That's that one. Then we have, ooh, this is a really rare one. So this is the Tangfolio Witness 1911. Um, I never, I, I saw this going catalogs when I was a kid, but I could never find it. And these are just for, these made in Taiwan. Co copyright 2003, wow. I think it's made in Taiwan. Although I can't. Anyway, it comes with two of them. They both have 12 rounds and they're black. And uh, it shows some other package options for the the Witness 1911. Um, I think the only the only really different thing about the Tangfolio Witness 1911 is that uh, it was uh, like associated with a uh, world champion and European champion uh, IPSC shooter, but otherwise they're just regular um, KWC 1911 magazines. And again, I can't find a, uh, a make on these, although they do feel high quality. These are, I don't think these are the Chinese made ones. I think these are the KWC ones. I have a tank folio. I have two tank folio witnesses in my basement um, that I got loose. So this will be a good addition to those. And then here's the best one I got. 
This is the UHC Desert Eagle magazine, and this one's this is actually a pretty cool cover. So, made in Taiwan, copyright 2004. Um, fits. It's got all these different item numbers at the top that it fits into. Um, for spring powered Desert Eagle 44 Magnum, this holds 25 rounds. There's a nice little uh, catalog thing here of all the different packages you can get. Um, I believe at the time these were all made by uh, UHC. Oh, so it's a bit misleading. There's three of them that are for USA and Canada. And then there's three of them that are made for like European countries and stuff. And it appears like the only difference is that uh, the European ones don't have an orange tip. And uh, maybe a little bit of different box art. Um, unfortunately, this one um, had a bit of an unfortunate arrival in that. Look, it's like it's so close to breaking in half. Like the screw just totally busted apart, right? And I tried tightening it up and it just wouldn't do anything, so. Um, which is just a really unfortunate fate. There's, there's like white, uh, what do you call it? Uh, it's like that, that, that white, that like solid white that uh, clear plastic makes when it gets hit with something. That's all over this. Um, and really, it, it just sucks. Because these were so much better than the uh, Chinese ones. Who, I'm not sure made those, but these were good. How much is this all about? 25 BBs. So I have to get this glued back up. And then we have one more surprise from this one. So you'll notice this actually opens up. And what's inside really caught me off guard. So it comes with a little catalog. Uh, this is the 2006 collection. Um, again, it's, it's a bit smaller, but you know, I have this one. And, um, but this was still fun to look at again. So that was a really cool and unexpected feature. So now I'm starting to question myself, what other cyber gun items have catalogs stowed away in them? I always relied on the uh, bonus catalog indicator for the uh, BBs. But I mean, now I'm finding, I've found, including this one, I found two more catalogs that weren't even mentioned anywhere on the box in a uh, 5,000 jar. So I'm, I'm going to really kind of try to shell out some more money for sealed uh, cyber gun stuff. Uh, some really good finds here. So the two in the middle were ordered from Spain and then the uh, uh, ones on the outside were ordered from America. And uh, I'll have all the UPCs, all the product codes and stuff like that uh, hooked up into the description. Thank you guys for watching. I had a lot of fun showing these to you, and uh, I've actually never even seen these before, so that was a really, really riveting experience to go open up something entirely new. Why can't I hold all these magazines?